FX and Trading Group. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. And uh, in this uh, next Market Maker Method video, we're going to go ahead and cover trade setups uh, and entry triggers. All right. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it here. So trade setups and entry triggers. Um, one of the things that we need to first do before we can talk about uh, having any kind of trade setups or entry triggers uh, is going to be identifying the market maker cycle to determine what the directional bias is going to be. Now you're going to go ahead and actually do that on the one hour chart, right? Now, very important that if if you can't determine what part of the cycle you're in, you should not be trading the pair because it makes it very difficult for you to actually have a directional bias to begin with. Number two, you don't know where you are in, where you are in the cycle, and so you're susceptible to being faked out by the market maker. So if you don't know where you are in the cycle, it makes it pretty difficult to trade that pair. So I would skip that pair and trade a different pair. There's 50 other trades, 50 other pairs you can trade. So just pick a different one. All right. Um, once you've identified your, your directional bias and you know what part of the cycle you're in, you can go ahead and drop down to the 15 minute time frame um, in order to find uh, the patterns and the setups that we're going to go over. All right. Um, you need to identify your entry triggers based on candlestick patterns, moving averages, or TDI confirmations. The most important one is the pattern. Okay. That is the most important one is the pattern. The moving averages, TDI confirmations and stuff like that, they are just literally extra sources of confirmation, okay? The most important thing is the pattern, the time of the cycle, and the actual time of, of, of the day or night, okay? So pattern, cycle, time. Pattern cycle time. Those are the three most important things that you need to consider um, when looking for a trade setup. Pattern cycle time. Okay. Moving averages, TDI that we'll talk about later. Those are, are extra things that you can use for confirmation. Okay. And lastly, how to manage your trade using stop loss, take profit and know when to get out early if needed. This, this last part is very important. Knowing when to get out early if needed. Okay. And we'll cover, we'll cover this a, a little bit later on in this video um, of when is, when would you need to exit out too early? Okay. Cause there are definitely going to be sometimes when you need to exit out early okay and i'll show you some examples of those all right so as far as setting up your charts okay you're going to need a couple of indicators and again these are just additional tools to help you conf confirm essentially what's happening okay this does not replace the pattern, the cycle, the timing, everything like that. These are just extra tools that you can have available to confirm what you're seeing on the charts. So very important that you do not make trading decisions based on indicators. You make your trading decisions based on on the pattern, the cycle, the time, okay? So, 
First thing is your EMAs, your exponential moving averages. Okay, you're going to want to have a 5, 13, 50, 200, and 800. Okay, and you're going to want to learn these names that we call them. So, 5, 13, 50, 200, 800. Basically, mustard, ketchup, water, mayo, blueberry. So, mustard being for the 5, ketchup being for the 13, water being for the 50, mayo being the 200, and the blueberry being the 800. Okay? Now, I would recommend that you also, when you put them on uh, your chart, obviously color them the same color as mustard. So, yellow for the 5 red for ketchup, water blue, you know, uh, mayo white, and blueberry like an aqua blue, you know, something like that. Um, but definitely color them, that way you know which ones they are, okay? Um, so these moving averages, what you're going to use them for, um, some of these moving averages are going to help you with entries or when to enter, um, the others will help you in determining when to take a profit. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. TDI. So TDI is basically a short for Traders Dynamic Index. It's basically an indicator that is based off of the RSI. And uh, I will have a video on that um, later on as we move along with the series. Um, again, the TDI, especially the TDI, I, I don't use myself. I don't use the TDI because I don't think I, I need it. Um, however, if I have any questions myself, I pull it up real quick just to look at it. But it's not something that I personally have on my charts looking at it all the time. Um, it's just an extra tool. Um, I feel more confident in, you know, knowing the pattern, the cycle, the time and going off the EMAs than I do, uh, you know, having the TDI on the, on my screen as well. I'm not the type of person that likes to have a bunch of indicators on their screen. So, um, next is going to be the daily high and low. Um, basically like a, an average uh, daily range is what we're talking about. Um, so ADR, if, if you can get it. Um, on your uh, on your trading platform. If not, I'm going to show you how to view a daily high and low indicator on TradingView. That's free. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about the actual candlestick patterns that we're looking for. Okay. All right. So we're looking for these patterns, okay? Railroad tracks, cord of wood, morning star, evening star, and a shift candle. So, so these are the different types of setups, patterns that you'll see on the charts that could, um, that'll go ahead and actually give you a trigger to enter a trade, okay? If we're not getting Ws, if we're not getting Ms, this is what we're going to be looking for. I re so I repeat that again. So the primary ones are Ms and Ws, right? If we do not see Ms and Ws, these are the other ones that you're going to see. And so you'll base your trades off of these patterns. So M's, W's, railroad tracks, quarter wood, morning star, evening star, and a shift candle that's typically 10 plus pips or so. Okay. I'm going to show you these on charts so you can see what they look like. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about. All right. So the types of patterns. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, type one which is this right here. Now, type, on a type one pattern, 
um, what we're looking for is we're looking for a false move either to either past the low or the high of the Asian session. So in this example here, it's a false move to the low uh, past the Asian session. And you see how it creates um, the first leg comes up and then uh, market makers come back down and hit it again, hit the same low again, and then rise for the rest of the day. So that makes that W there. Okay. And so you can see here how also um, where you can use EMAs because you'll have the Mayo line, the 200 line, protecting um, the W there. And we call that pins to the Mayo. Okay. So this right here is a type one setup. Okay. Let's take a look at a, uh, a type two setup. So type two setup is basically when the market maker makes his move and it's making it at either the high of the Asian range or the low of the Asian range. So you see all the little arrows. You see how the bars never close below the Asian low. You see that? So they hit it they hit the low for the first time go back up hit it again you see the very long wicks uh coming down so they end up hitting it four times and it just also happens to be the 200 ema there so that's also pins to the mayo as well that's another confirmation um that we're going to be rising from this right so on this particular example they're hitting it three or four times because they don't have the amount of orders that they want filled before they rise. So they keep hitting it over and over and over again until they get what they need and then they get the hell out of there. Okay. So that is a type uh, two setup. Again, this is just solely based on like W's and M's. I'll show you what uh, the other ones look like. This is the type three setup, okay? Now with the type three setups, what we're looking for is we're looking for the move, the W, the M, um, the pattern to happen in the middle of the Asian session. So you can see right here, that the W is created in the middle of the Asian session and we rise uh, for the rest of the day, okay? So this is what, what we call a type three setup, okay? So very important, these are the three different types of patterns that we're looking for, three different types of setups that we're looking for, okay? So we need to identify, the first thing is we need to identify which setup we're looking at. Once we figure out, okay, we're looking at a type two setup or a type three setup. Okay, are we gonna get a W or are we gonna get a railroad track instead or a quarter wood instead, morning star, evening star instead. So all these things um, would follow after we identify what type um, a pattern we're looking at. All right. So let's talk about entry rules. So the first one is second leg of the M or W at or near the high or low of the day. Okay. Let me repeat that again. Second leg of the M or W at or near the lower high of the day. Okay. So very important, very important. Second leg. We do not, let me go back here just so we do not want to trade the first leg. If you look at this example here, if you would have traded the first leg of the W, we would have been waiting there for over three to four hours. And we would have been li literally emotional, an emotional wreck 
waiting for this thing to go. So we always wait for it to develop. The only time that you will not wait for it to develop an M or W is when you have railroad tracks, morning star, evening star, or a quart of wood. That is the only time that you do not wait. Okay. Every other time you're going to wait for that M or W to develop. All right. All right. So let me go back here. All right. Second rule, what candlestick you need to identify basically what candlestick pattern they are showing you. If you cannot identify what candlestick pattern they're showing you, you cannot take the trade. Okay. It just makes sense. We, we are in the 80 to 90% business. We are not in the gambling business. We're not in a 50, 50% business. We're in the 80 to 90% business. So if you cannot tell what pattern it is, you're not trading. As simple as that. Okay. I know a lot of people get so anxious because they feel like they're missing out because they're not in the market. Okay. Get over that crap because that crap's going to blow your account. All right. So second leg of the M or W at or near the high of the day. Know what candlestick pattern you're looking at. Whether it's an M or W, a railroad track, um, a quarter wood, morning star, evening star. Okay. If you don't if you don't know, you're not trading it. All right. And then we need, here's your entry trigger. We need to close above or below the 13 EMA, above catch up or below catch up. Okay. So you do not enter the trade until until the candle is closed above or below the 13 EMA catch up. Okay. So if you're waiting for a second leg W, you are not entering that trade until the second leg of the W has closed above the 13 EMA. And I'll show you that on the charts. Okay. Um, if you're using TDI, you're basically going to use the TDI, the second set of confirmation. And what you're looking for is for the RSI cross to cross above or below the signal line um, and above or below the market baseline. And we'll go over that as well um, when we make the TDI video. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the charts and we'll take a look. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what we got. Okay. So we're just, we'll start here. And I'm going to go ahead and this is my Asian box range. And I'm going to put it in place here. All right, so there's my Asian range right here. And then look what happened here on this example. We have market makers went ahead and moved uh, higher than the Asian um, high, right? So we moved uh, to higher. Now, look what happened here. This is what I'm talking about. So this right here is a railroad track you see how both bodies are the same right and then look what happened we immediately just dropped right we didn't come down make an m and then come down right we went ahead 
<clears throat> and we literally just went up, faked everybody out, and then made railroad tracks, got the hell out of there. Okay? So this would have been your trade. On this example, this would have been your trade here. You know, this whole thing. All right. Now, based on the rules, right? Your entry should have been here. Stop loss here. Okay. And stop loss is going to be five, uh, five to ten pips or so from the from the high. So around there. Right. Now, once. <clears throat> Once you take the trade, the goal is to get between 30 to 50 pips, okay? So, in this example here, we would have gotten 50 pips, 51.2, right? So, 50 pips on that example there. Let's move on to the next one here. You place the Asian range again. There's your Asian range. And as you can see here, we have market makers made their false move to the low, passed the Asian low, closed below the Asian low, and look what we have here another railroad tracks right so this is a type one because we closed below the uh the asian low and then we didn't have to wait for the m to form or the i'm sorry the w to form right so we were expecting like that and then go up no we didn't need to wait for that because we had railroad tracks right there, right? And then your entry would have been there. And so this trade here would have been another 66 pips if you kept it the whole way, right? So if you kept it the whole way, uh, you're looking at 66 pips. If you did not keep it the whole way and you just kept it to mayo, you still got your 30 pips. Okay. So while, while we're talking about this, let's talk about take profits. So typically, if we're moving towards water or mayo, like this example, like this example here, where we're in a downtrend here, right? And then we're going up against it. Our targets are first water and then mayo, right? So a lot of times what you'll see is it'll hit water real quick, push back, and then you'll have another hit to mayo, right? Now, one thing that I would recommend is when you're setting, if this is a situation that you're in where you're going against, right, the the previous trend from yesterday, and you see we're, we're coming down and then we're going up, right, and then here's water, here's mayo. First target is water, second target is mayo. If you're, if you're trying to go for mayo, you want to make sure that you always 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 take profit literally right before it physically hits mail so like four pips or so um before getting to mail that way you can you can hit it you know that way you can set your take profit okay but uh but yeah so in this example here that's what we're going for 
is we're going to water and then we're going to mayo. And this example here, same thing, water and mayo. Okay. Now, if it's like this, where it's flat, right? You see how the lines are flat? They are not like this is still going down. You see that? So in this example here where the, where the lines are flat, the EMA lines are flat, we're still going. Okay? We're still going here until we get our, you know, 30 pips, which is right here. All right, and you don't have to take profit at 30 pips, but I'm going to I'm going to explain to you why 30 pips is all that you need. Okay? If you if you can become a master of getting 30 pips every day, you'll you'll be in good shape. All right, let's take a look at another one here. There is your Asian range right there. And what do we have here? So we have market makers moving above, above the Asian range. We are closing above the Asian range. So we're, at a, we're in a type one, right? So here is where you could see a couple different things right so for me here's here's what I see right just because I've been doing this for for a while now so here's what I see right you may not see that but that's what I see others may see this may see these two right here or I'm sorry, these three as a quarter wood. Okay, that's something that you could possibly see. I mean, it's you know, after you trained your eye on on this, I mean, you'll you'll see what you see. But um, again, the the main point of this is, you know, we had we made the move up. We're in a type one setup. We're looking for a drop, and we get it. So your entry on this one would have been right there. There's your stop loss. And then if you want to do, you know, 30 pips, you're looking at right here. There's your 30. If you keep going, you can get 70. I mean, you know, you could have gotten possibly 85 or so. Okay, so that's another example right there. Let's move on to the next one. I mean, by the way, as you can see, I mean, we're just literally going from day to day to day to day, right? We're not doing, we're not skipping anything. We're literally going from day to day. And you see this happens literally every single day. Almost every single day. Alright. So here we have our Asian session. Um, one rule that I did want to mention that I want you guys to write down is that if the Asian range is... 40 to 50 pips wide so like for example this right here is about 44 pips I would potentially consider not trading that pair because I would consider that Asian range as a blown range right meaning that the typical Asian range is only 25 pips we're at double that right now But let's see what we got anyways. 
So on this setup here, we have our Asian low here. And look what we have here. We have market makers. They come down, come down, come down. See how they hit it three times? And then we break out. And there's your trade, right? So this would have gotten you 27 pips, 26 pips or so on this one. Now, granted, some of you may have entered, let's say, here, okay, because you saw this, you know, you saw this instead. You saw that, okay, and the reason I put this down here is because there is, uh, if I move this line here, you see how there's a, a wick here at the bottom. So you see how that makes a that would make a W to you guys. You know what I'm saying? So either way, this is why I don't recommend trading ranges, you know, that are 40 to 50 pips when you have that during Asia, because you don't get a lot of movement after that. The movement happened in Asia. So, but anyway, so even if you were to let's say go in on here here on this one or on this one your stop loss no matter what would have been there so you would not have been stopped out right so that would have been essentially the trade right here though okay let's go ahead and move on to the next one here I mean, kind of see what this one's going to be already. Right? So what do we have here? A type 1 setup. Here we have uh, market makers move all the way down. And then we have a railroad track bounce all the way back up. Okay? So... This this could be one of two things. You can think of, of this as one of two things. You can think of it as a railroad track, or you can also think of it as a shift candle. Okay? The reason I say that is because typically you would expect, you know, railroad tracks to be perfectly even with each other, right? And these two are not. Um so that's where you have that shift um, candle that I talked about in that chart that I showed you guys. Okay. So, so you can look at it as a railroad track or as a shift candle. As you can see, the candle itself is about 11 pips. So that's uh, an example of what I'm talking about. Okay. Of, of it being a shift candle. All right, let's All right, so in this example here, we have our Asian range and we have a move all the way down. You see all this? We have a move all the way down here. This is something that's really not tradable right you look at this and it's just nothing it's not tradable until the US session okay so this doesn't give us any setup here that we like until we get to the um, to the US session and so what do we see when we get to the US session right 
or remember what I said, the pattern, the cycle, the timing, right? So right at the US session open, so we have this move here, false move, and then we have three, four bars together like this. This is a quarter wood right there. Okay, and then as you can see, we move up for the rest of the session into consolidation. So that would have been your 30 pips right there. And if you would have held it, you would have gotten to Mayo, right? So, you know, playing by the rules, you would have gotten in there. Stop loss would have been down here. And then your take profit would have been either 30 or, you know, up here at Mayo. And if you did it to Mayo, that's, you know, essentially 44 pips. So not too bad. Okay. So that's another one. All right, guys. So I've shown you literally we've gone back to what, uh, almost a week on the same pair. This is only one pair. This is only one pair. And you can see almost every day we've got, we've had something damn near every day. I mean, this is crazy. I can't make this up. I mean, you guys are seeing this. So, I mean, it is what it is, right? So, I mean, just go back and look at the different pairs and do this. One of the most powerful tools that you have in trading view is is the ability to replay the charts okay if you are really serious if you're really serious about getting consistency down and actually making this work you will use this and you will spend most of your time doing the replay instead of trading because until you get consistent at it just to get your mind literally to recognize what's going on and what i mean by replay is here's you know a chart right here's your chart you can hit replay up here and you can literally replay let's say this entire thing here so literally you just hit play and it replays the candles for you like I don't know I mean that's ridiculously powerful because now I can actually go back you know back here and I could sit here now and I can replay these candles right I can replay the candles and what I'll do is I'll start drawing, you know, my thing, my Asian range here, right? There's my Asian range. I'll play it and I'll adjust it, right? Once it gets to two o'clock and then I'll go ahead and replay it. Here we go. What does it look like so far right now? Right now, so far, it looks like we could have some kind of a type one set up to go by, right? We just have to wait, wait, and let it develop, right? Let it see what pattern we get. Look. Look at that. Now, this right here didn't give us a pattern that we would have wanted. There is no pattern here that you can see that you can tell me that you can take a trade off of, right? During London, at least, right? 
So the only one that we do have is hopefully during US session and that would have been here that would have been right here you know and if we look back to our if we look back to that on our examples what do we find that would have been what a morning star right but if we look it didn't meet our criteria for trading rules you see that because it never closed it never closed above the red line so that's what I'm talking about alright guys so we've went through a lot of the different pairs or a lot of different days so you can see what I'm looking for um, but definitely look guys this replay feature for you to be able to replay the charts again this is risk free practicing and let me tell you some this is the back testing part this is the part that nobody wants to do everybody wants to make money but nobody wants to do the work needed to learn how to do this so if you're serious about making money, being consistent, and knowing what the hell you're doing when you're trading, you need to be doing this on a daily basis. This is instead of going out on the weekend and drinking it up at the club and popping bottles, you need to be popping charts. Okay? You need to be popping charts instead of popping bottles. All right? This is how you get consistency. Because you can literally sit here and play and replay the charts over and over and over again. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay. Anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, jump back over to the presentation and we'll finish this video up. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, so let's go ahead and finish this up here. Um, so trade management. Our goal, as I said, is to take uh, from 30 to 50 pips from the market every day. That should be your goal. If you can consistently do 30 to 50 pips five days a week, okay, that'll give you the freedom that you need. I'm going to show you why. Stop loss should be 5 to 10 pips below your perceived high or low of the day. So 5 to 10 pips below what you think is the high or low of the day. Okay. Risk to reward ratio. Um... Risk to reward ratio is going to be at least one to one or better. If you do not get a one to one or better risk to reward, you are not taking that trade. Simple as that. Okay. So one to one or above. If it ain't one to one or above, you're not taking the trade. Simple as that. Keeping it simple. Okay. So here is what's possible trading five days a week five days a week if you trade just one pair per day 30 pips per day that's 150 pips per week 600 pips per month and if you're trading a one standard lot size that's six thousand per month okay by the way that's seventy two thousand a year by making 30 pips per day on a standard lot. All right? Think about that. 
seventy-two thousand a year. That's mind blowing. That's I would say eighty percent of the United States of America isn't making seventy-two thousand a year, and you're doing it by getting thirty pips a day. That's crazy to me. I'm sorry, but that's crazy. If that doesn't motivate you to do a replay every freaking weekend, every night, every day, I don't know what does. Maybe this will. Two pairs traded per day, 60 pips per day, 300 per week, 1200 per month on a standard lot size. That's $12,000 per month. That's $12,000 per month. If instead of one pair, you trade two pairs and you get 30 pips on each pair. 60 pips per day, 300 pips per week, 1,200 pips per month. That's crazy on a standard lot size. Okay? Three, I mean, this is crazy. Three pairs traded per day. That's 90, 450 per week, 1,800 per month. On a standard lot size, that's 18,000. 18,000 per month. Like some people don't even make that in a year. Like that's crazy. And you're making it on a month, right? So this is just to give you some perspective. Literally. Here's four, obviously it's 420, 600, 2400, 24,000 per month. If you trade four pairs, right? Here's what I want you to concentrate on. One pair. 300 or, you know, 30 pips per day, 150 per week, 600 per month. That's it. Get to this. If you can get to this and you can do this consistently, that will come next. And then that, and then that. Okay. It just depends on how much money you need to pay your bills. All right, guys. So that's what's possible. I mean, you know, that's what it is. So if you want these kind of results, you have to put in the work. It's not going to be easy. If it was easy, every small Joe would be doing it. So it's not easy. It's not easy. But if you put in the work, okay, if you grind it out, if you do... If you do the homework, if you do the replays, stop going out, spend it at home with the charts, you'll get this, and this is what's possible. Everybody wants to be a lion, everybody wants to be a beast, until it's time to go do what beasts do, and this is what beasts do. This is what lions do. Okay? They don't care what other people think. They don't care, you know, other people's opinion. The minute you start taking other people's opinion, you start living their lifestyle. So, let's do this for yourself. Do this for your family. Do this for your kid. Get it done. That way you can have the freedom that you want. You can spend the rest of your time with your family and your kids. Alright guys, until the next video guys, have a good one.